Okay, so we're now on to the last question in the paper, which is question five. Um, it's worth 16 marks. There are ad an additional four marks available for spelling, punctuation and grammar, and I'll talk a bit about that later on. The absolute must with this question is that you have to leave yourself 25 minutes um, to answer this. Five of those minutes should really be spent in planning and sort of reanalyzing the sources and that will give you 20 minutes to write your answer and I would definitely advise that at the very beginning of the exam when it starts you work out what time you need to be moving on to this question and you scribble that down somewhere and you make sure that when it is that time that you just move straight on to this question. Um, so it says study all the sources A to F and use your own knowledge. Do bear in mind that sometimes source F is on the back page of the sources booklet and sometimes students don't turn the booklet over but do make sure that you have a look at that source. Although you don't need to include all the sources in your answer, you can you know, get a top level answer just by using four sources but if that source is really useful to you um, then you want to make sure that you've seen it so do always turn over the booklet. So our hypothesis is the main reason for the growing fear of communism in the USA was the Rosenberg case. How far do the sources in this paper support this statement? Um, by this point, you've looked at sources A to E already. So the only one that you need to look at now is source F. Um, this is from a history textbook published in 1996. And it says, by 1950, the Red Scare had reached the point of hysteria. Relations between the capitalist USA and the communist Soviet Union had turned sour and led to the Cold War. The Hiss and Rosenberg court cases and the work of McCarthy encouraged fears of Soviet spies in high places. The investigations of the House Committee of Un-American Activities seemed to suggest that communists were infiltrating even the film industry. Um, now... Again, just like with question um, four, the first thing I would do if I was answering this question would be to create myself a very quick grid. Um, on one side, I would be looking for evidence in the sources that it was the Rosenberg's, uh, the Rosenberg's case that caused this growing fear of communism. And in the other column, I would be recording evidence that it wasn't. Now, at this point, I would advise that you pause the video and yourself go through the sources and try to create your own table um, before you watch me do it, because I think that would be more helpful. Um, in addition to that, I am just going to type straight onto this page because I can't show you the sources and this page at the same time. So it would be helpful if you had the sources in front of you so you could see what I was talking about. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is come over to this column. So I'm going to try to find evidence that it wasn't the Rosenberg's case. Um, if we look at source F, which was the last source from the history textbook, they say that while it was the Rosenberg case, it was also to do with the Hiss case, it was to do with McCarthy, um, and that they were all responsible. Um, so there's some evidence there that it wasn't just the Rosenbergs. It also implies that it was the activities of the HUAC that were responsible for increasing this um, growing fear of communism. If we look at source E, um, which hopefully you've got out in front of you, um, that source, let me just have a quick look, was our Judy Garland extract. And if you have a look at that source, you will remember that she blames the HOAC uh, and their investigations for the growing fear. Um, so HOAC and their investigations, accusations. Um, similarly, if you looked at source D again, which was the photograph, we know that they were protesting, they were out marching campaigning against the actions of the HUAC and the treatment of the Hollywood Tem. Okay, so um, if I just leave it there for the moment, obviously in the exam you can't just state these points, you have to develop them with some evidence from the sources. Um, I'm not going to do that here because I, I don't have enough time, but you need to make sure you're doing that in the exam. 
The reason that I've got um, another row underneath is because I'm going to think about the reliability of these sources because, you know, we could have lots and lots of evidence here telling us that it wasn't the Rosenbergs and that it was other reasons. But if all of these sources are unreliable, then this set of evidence really doesn't hold much weight and it's not very useful to us. So um, let's choose another colour very quickly. Um, okay, so source F. Uh, it's a history textbook from 1996. Now, obviously, if you were living in Nazi Germany in the 1930s, uh, textbooks weren't perhaps reliable, but our history textbooks today are fairly reliable because they've been researched and compiled by historians and their purpose is to educate and inform, so they're usually very reliable. Um, um, source E was our um, extract from Judy Garland's interview and although we said that it may be limited because it was just one person that actually what she was saying was typical for what we knew was happening at the time such as the campaigns and the marches so it's fairly typical and therefore it's fairly reliable um, although you would have to bear in mind that it's one person and she could be trying to protect or gain sympathy for her friends and finally, source D, the photograph. Um, again, photographs have limitations. We need to bear that in mind. But because it's saying something similar to what we're seeing in source E, it gives it more strength. And so what we're thinking at this point is that we've got a fair amount of evidence to suggest that it was other factors than the Rosenbergs, and that actually these sources are reliable. So initially, it's making this set of evidence here look fairly strong. What we need to do now is have a look at the sources to see if there's any evidence to suggest that it was the Rosenbergs. Okay, let me just um, copy and paste this because it will probably be quicker. So, uh, we know that in source A, it was our statement from the judge on the Rosenberg case, that he said that it was... Uh, the Rosenbergs who were adding to this fear of communism, um, that they were responsible for 50,000 deaths, they could be responsible for millions more, okay? This is definitely evidence that the Rosenbergs are having an impact on the fear of communism because anybody hearing that would probably be terrified. Uh, source B, um, in terms of the Rosenbergs case, it's telling us that it's a big case and that it would have had a lot of attention. You know, there were lots of people protesting, campaigning for the Rosenbergs, which tells us that it was probably a pretty well-known case and it could well have been adding to the hysteria and fear of communism. And finally, Source C does say, yes, it did cause uh, hysteria. But we have to bear in mind, actually, and I will try to insert a line here, uh, that that source was actually saying that they were being used as scapegoats and that it was actually blaming the government for this communist hysteria and that they were really using the Rosenbergs to promote this fear and to encourage it. So we can see here we've got three points from those sources telling us that the Rosenbergs were having a dramatic impact on the fear of communism. So literally repeating what we did with our first set of evidence, we now have to look at the provenance of these sources to find out how heavy this set of evidence is. Um, so let's start off with source A. Source A was from the judge who presided over the Rosenberg's case, it's incredibly biased. He was trying to defend his judgment, um, which was that they were guilty and that they were going to be sentenced to death. So it's fairly biased. Um, source B, which was our photograph, again, we said was fairly limited because photographs are usually just one moment in time they can be staged although it was fairly useful because it showed us that there were a lot of people protesting against the Rosenbergs and finally source C which was our statement from the lawyers for the Rosenbergs again fairly biased 
because he was trying to prove that the Rosenbergs were innocent. Now, this is the crucial part. This is what I would have done in my planning, okay? And this is what will take you five minutes because what you need to do now is think, okay, which set of evidence is stronger? Now, if you look here, we have three points telling us that it was the Rosenbergs. But the problem is, is that these three points come from sources that are biased. So it's weakening this. There isn't a lot of evidence anyway, but it's now weak because it's coming from biased sources. Whereas if we look over here, we can see that we've got numerous points telling us that it wasn't the Rosenbergs and that it was other factors that were leading um, to this fear of communism. And they are from reliable sources and sources that are in support of each other. So it means that this is our stronger set of evidence. Now, in the exam, we would now begin to write it up and this would now be our writing frame. And how you would write it is, um, you'd have an opening statement where you said that overall, we've decided that the sources do not support the view that the Rosenberg case was the main reason for the growing fear of communism. We found out actually that it was other factors. Um, you need to think of words you could use, use to describe the amount of challenge or support. So, you know, vast, great, major, partial. We would probably say that there was a fairly strong amount of challenge towards the hypothesis because we've got quite a few points in there from very reliable sources. And then I've put a copy of the writing frame that you could use to write up your answer. And this is the one that we use in class. Um, you can pause the video here to have a look at that. What you really need to remember um, with this question is to get the top marks, you must include at least four sources. You've got to reach an overall judgment uh, in terms of how far, and you need to consider the provenance of the sources and how that affects how much weight they hold. Um, construct sets of evidence. By that I mean, you know, these two sets here and try to look for similarities and differences between the sources um, and don't forget that there are up to four marks available for this question so do try to make sure that your answer has got a good structure that there is a flow to it and that you're spelling keywords correctly um, I hope these videos have been useful to you um, and if you need any more help or if you've got any more questions, please feel free to post them as comments. Thanks.